making a right turn or a left turn, uh, and, the, and the two rear wheels really can't be turning at the same speed when that's happening. We also went and looked at uh, real off-road cars to see uh, what their problems were, and we asked them about their suspension, why they did the things the way they did, so that when we designed our car that we'd have an idea uh, basically what we wanted to try. Well, we tried a lot of things, and, and uh, I can tell you not everything goes right. I mean, we built, uh, I think, six different prototypes before we got to the, to the RC-10, and, uh, but it was a learning process that taught us a lot, and so by the time we got to the RC-10, we pretty well knew what we wanted to do, and, and uh, then it was just kind of uh, designing the ideas that we had learned before into the basic car. And Roger, Roger Curtis designed, I'd say, at least 90% of the car. He gets, he gets the credit for the car. There's just no doubt. I mean, uh, my part was rather small. I did, I did the wheels, and I did the basic body tooling and, and uh, wings and, and stuff like that, which uh, did out of necess necessity because we were running out of time, and, and things like that had to get done, you know. Today, looking in the future, I know that it's still growing. And it is a, a sport that I think uh, every kid has to feel that he's a driver. I mean, it's, it's one of the normal things about growing up is that you just know that you're born to be a driver. And this is a way to find out uh, without killing yourself, uh, without, you know, bank, bankrolling your house and, and to do it like, uh, like basically when I started with real cars, you can do it and, and you can, it's a family sport too. There's a, uh, there's a lot of ladies that drive. There's a, a lot of kids with their, with their fathers that can drive. So it's something really that a family can do together. What I would do would be to, to go to a local hobby shop. They're gonna have off-road cars. I mean, it's something that's in every hobby shop now. And they can tell you where um, the activity is in the area. Say uh, they're running over on First and Main Street or whatever. They can tell you where people are running. And, and then when you get to where that is, then it's easy because then uh, you, you can get more help. You can actually see the cars run. In the off-road kind of racing, uh, right now we have uh, what would be four classes. We have a, a two-wheel drive class, which is divided into a stock motor class and a modified motor class. And then we have four-wheel drive class, which is also divided into a stock motor class and a modified motor class. In, uh, in the beginning, we had uh, the two-wheel drives and four-wheel drives race together, but um, our RC-10 was good enough in the beginning that it was beating the four-wheel drive cars. So it was a natural progression to change to a, a separate four-wheel drive class. And, uh, and so now we have the four separate classes that, that don't race together anymore. As a beginner, I would say to go out to a few races, uh, talk to some of the racers, take your car with you, let them show you things and try and help you, and then get a little practice. Go out to the racetrack and just run and get familiar with your car before you enter your first race. Most of the motors in the United States right now that are used for racing originate out of Japan. I modify them to get more speed, and the modifications are that we rewind them to get a little bit hotter motor, faster motor. We also install ball bearings to reduce the drag and get a little bit more speed. And mainly blueprint, fine tune the motor to make it run at its maximum speed and climb less power. And then I make modified motors for all the various uh, sizes and they become specialized in that uh, we make a motor for a road course and we also make a, uh, a faster motor for the oval racing. Car makes a big difference. Without a good running car, you can't have a good running motor. Fight!
Halsey World Class Mechanics shows you performance modifications for your RC10. Jay and I prefer to run our batteries front to back. And with the RC10, you have an option of running your batteries from side to side or front to back. In the front to back position, we prefer to run the gold springs that come with the kit. We feel that it makes the car more responsive and controllable. Uh, we have found, however, in our experience, that when we run the batteries from side to side, that the silver springs uh, handle much better on the car with the batteries in that position. The other thing is that we use entirely stock parts in the shocks. What I found works best for our particular suspension setup is trying to maintain the rear arms in a neutral position when the batteries, the motor, and everything is in the car and the car is sitting on the ground. The other thing that I have found is the suspension being located in the center hole uh, for your upper trailing link allows the tire to move up and down and stay in a relatively straight position so that you keep as much tire contact as possible at all times with the surface. On the rear shocks, the position that I prefer is in the outside hole on the lower control arm. We have moved the upper hole in approximately one-eighth of an inch, and it seems to give it a little more progressive spring rate. Depending upon the outside temperature, that's what we use to gauge the viscosity of oil that we run. Many times we find that for an all-purpose oil, normally 30 weight will meet most of your requirements. In 40 degree weather, we have ran 15 weight oil. And in 90 degree weather, we run 40 weight oil. And the only real way to tell the 